welcome to Words Unspoken, the Hills podcast, paying tribute to the reality show that aired on MTV from 2006 to 2010. We are two Southern sisters re-watching The Hills in 2016 and chatting about it weekly for your entertainment. My name is Susan, and I'm a 30-something photographer who hates most reality shows but loves The Hills. I have been re-watching the show for a few months. My name is Jem. I'm a professional in my 30s who hasn't seen the show since it originally aired, so I'm really looking forward to reliving the magic again 10 years later. We watched the first few seasons of the show in real time when we were younger versions of ourselves, and we are so excited to revisit every episode from our new points of view. The episode we are talking about today is Episode 1, Season 1, New City, New Drama. So the show starts out with Lauren packing up her bags in Laguna Beach, and it's her moving to L.A. And you might have to be kind of my reference on this from the Laguna Beach days, but um, was she already in school when she lived in Laguna Beach? Yes. she. uh, If you remember from Laguna Beach, she was a little bit older than the other people on there, and she went to San Francisco, and that's actually where she and Heidi met. Right, right. And then they moved in together. Um, Yeah, I think something that really struck me about watching this again was that everybody looked so pretty. Yes. I mean, they're all, you know, traditional beauty standards of the West, but still, I was just like staring at them because they're so beautiful and so young. I was just mesmerized by them on my screen. And who can forget Lauren's classic pink suitcase? Ugh. Love it. It's going to have so many adventures. Yeah, so then the credits start, and I think um, those credits are some that I don't mind watching every time. It just makes everyone look so happy, and like you said, everyone's so pretty. I love the credits and, of course, the song. Then it opens up into Lauren and Heidi at the Hillside Villas poolside where they come up, and um, I guess Heidi got there first. And I did find it amusing that Lauren seemed like, why haven't you started unpacking yet? And Heidi's like, hey, I'm just chilling by the pool. We're not doing any spoilers in our podcast, but I have a feeling that there's a lot of foreshadowing this first moment where Elsie is busy and like let's go look at our apartment and Heidi's just like hanging out absolutely through this whole episode and so anyway then they go inside and they check out their new apartment and they get all excited and Lauren is very excited because she has an interview that evening with Teen Vogue for an internship enter the flip phone yes (laughs) The first of many in the hills, which certainly dates it, but it was also awesome. I'm like, oh, memories. All I could think of is the pictures. I had the same phone that Elsie's using when she has her panicked, you know, phone answering moment from Teen Vogue. And I was just remembering the horrible photos that that phone took. (laughs) But it was such a big deal. And you you could see a little preview of everything on the phone when it was closed. And then you would just flip it open to to talk and text. And it was just very important. Well, let's (laughs) talk about that panicked phone call. First of all, before we go any further, I want to make one thing clear. We are well aware that there are some things in reality TV that are not really reality. (laughs) Maybe you want to tell your story about this, Jim. Yeah. uh, So when it was actually when Laguna Beach, I think, was being filmed, uh, my husband was on a business trip in Laguna Beach and... He was in a restaurant, and apparently they were filming a scene at the table next to him with some of the girls on the original show. And they would stop filming, and the producers would come in and, you know, fix everyone's hair and then have them do the scene over again and give them new things to talk about. And then they'd tape again. And I just remember him calling me and telling me the story, and I couldn't believe it. It was all a lie. Oh, I know you were so shocked by that. (laughs) But anyway, I want to say that we will not be talking all the time about oh this looks so fake or you can tell they staged this because that honestly it would get a little monotonous so we do want to say right up front we know that a lot of this stuff is fake and especially you know with this 10th anniversary there's been a lot of stories coming out saying oh this was fake and this was fake so we might talk about that if they've talked about it but we're not going to constantly analyze these scenes to be like oh this seems staged because that's definitely how I felt about this Vogue phone call because in reality if this really happened like to me 
even as a young person coming out of college, super unprofessional to call and be like, oh, we're changing your interview. Please be here in five minutes. Yeah, Probably not going to happen, to be honest. But once again, we won't spend a lot of time talking about that, although it will be very hard to do when we get to a certain person. <laughs> but that we'll, we'll talk about in a few seasons. If somebody else can do a podcast about how staged everything is, but that is not what we are here to do on Words Unspoken with Jen and Susan. Absolutely. Lauren gets the phone call from Teen Vogue basically saying we need to do the interview right now so she has like five minutes to get ready which she does a great job never seen someone put on their makeup that fast and she goes to the Teen Vogue for her internship interview. But before this happens, there's a very crucial moment in the episode where Elsie flat irons her skirt because it is wrinkled with her hair flat ironed. We can discuss this a little later. Like we're going to discuss Justin Bobby, whoever that is. Um, we need to not talk about him yet. I know you want to, but we got to wait. spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So... Anyway, so Lauren goes and has her Teen Vogue interview, and what do you think about this interview? Well, um, it is very awkward. I think that it's funny when she's asked if she's a writer or if she's good at writing, and she says yes, and then she has kind of a panicked look on her face and says, well, I once enjoyed writing, or I used to enjoy writing, and kind of rescues herself. And I think she didn't really understand the question as far as what it means to be a good writer under those circumstances. I think that she was thinking, I know how to pick up a pen and write with it. And I have great penmanship. (laughs) Yeah. And I also think that um, this might be a little unfair towards Lauren because they really didn't show very much of the interview. And so they probably just showed the most awkward part. But I still felt really bad for her. Like, oh, there's nothing worse. And especially if she rushed to get there really fast, she's going to be super flustered and it's going to be hard for her to be like on her game. So very awkward though. I agree. And then after that, she goes back to the poolside and in comes our other star of the show Audrina. Um, She and Heidi are chilling poolside. There's another funny scene with um, Heidi and Lauren with her asking her why she hasn't unpacked yet and she's like, I'm just having fun by the pool. Like she really doesn't care and it's really funny. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the moment where Heidi is rocking the white tank top and lowrider denim skirt which was the absolute look du jour in those olden days and it just made me laugh to think of how many times I wore that outfit and how fashionable I was at the moment and how I probably would not step out of the house with that on these days. So I did, I did notice that look. Yeah. I I really enjoyed the outfit too. It was just, okay, that's a classic moment right there. (laughs) What did you think of Audrina's first appearance? Um, again, a little bit awkward because she's supposedly meeting Elsie for the first time and they very formally, formally shake hands. Well, let me tell you about that, Jim. I actually know this from (laughs) reading the excellent Us Weekly 10th Anniversary Edition, which everyone should pick up because it's really interesting. There's so many things from behind the scenes. But anyway, they actually found Audrina because she lived at the Hillside Villas and when they signed her on for the show, they did not actually want her to meet. So they told her she could not go to the pool or be in the lobby for two weeks because they did not want her to meet either one of the girls until they were ready to film it. So that was actually the first time she met Lauren. So by the time they shook hands at the pool, her anticipation had probably been growing and she was probably really nervous by that moment because they had built it up into this big thing for them to meet. So that that makes a lot of sense. But I thought it was kind of cute how the girls were all joking amongst each other and somebody mentioned, you know, we're going to adopt you. I can't remember if it was Heidi or Audrina. After Heidi referenced Audrina as her first friend in LA, and it was just a, a cute moment. Uh, I have a feeling that there won't be many more of those in the future with the three <laughs> of them living in perfect harmony. So. Okay, so then we come to the scene where um, they go out for the first time to the Geisha house, and it's Audrina, Lauren, Heidi, um, and finally we see some boys, Jordan and David, who honestly don't make much of an impression. But anyway, <laughs> they just have uh, the classic chatting over... Um, um, dinner. Yeah, the dinner was weird. I'll tell you this. These boys, I don't remember any of them. You, you were mentioning how they didn't make an impression on you. I have absolutely no memory of these boys whatsoever. Their names are flashing up on the screen with their faces, and I was just sitting there laughing because I remembered nothing about them. So I'm sure they're going to be super pivotal <laughs> 
Spoiler <laughs> alert. Um, and apparently it looks like Jordan is Heidi's boyfriend. So right. that's what I got from that. Um, so anyway, that was a pretty much forgettable din- dinner. And then we move on to the next day. Heidi and Lauren go to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising for their registration day. And once again, we see there's pretty much, I think right now they're trying to flesh out who Lauren is and who Heidi is. And they're very different. Lauren has a 3.6 GPA. Heidi wants to party all the time. (laughs) I think that Heidi's direct quote was something to this effect. I never did anything, just shopping and going out, talking about her high school experience. So great way to make an impression at your school at the beginning of semester. I am really embarrassed for her, to be honest. I mean, I'm like, does she know what she's saying? Is she saying this to be controversial? Because uh, you probably shouldn't say that to the director of admissions. It's a little odd. Maybe there's a building on campus that her parents named for her. I think at that point in her life, she had a lot of people telling her that it was cute and funny for her to kind of play that part, Um, whatever that may or may not have blossomed into down the road. We'll just have to wait and find out because who has any idea? I am excited to see them going to school, so that should be interesting to see all the school scenes. The next scene is Lauren getting a call from Teen Vogue. The uh, editor, Blaine, (laughs) tries to trick her. That he's not going to hire her. That was so (laughs) annoying. He leads her along with this drawn-out discussion of how she's so inexperienced and is very rare for people at her age to get this job. And she's sitting there sweating it out. And then at the very end, he says, oh, yeah, by the way, you're hired. And poor LC. And let me tell you, I was sweating it out, too. Because, you know, in the credits when it said Teen Vogue and she's working there, I was real worried she wasn't going to get the internship. (laughs) Nobody knew what was going to happen. It was very stressful to watch. And then, finally, Lauren starts working at Teen Vogue. It's her first day, and she meets our final cast member, Whitney. And and it's funny because they both know who the other person is. And, again, you can maybe provide backstory on this. But they're sitting side by side, not looking at each other, waiting to be taken out of the waiting room. Which, by the way, those blue chairs they're sitting in (laughs) are amazing. And I want them. And if anybody who is listening knows where they can be found, please tweet us or email us, words unspoken podcast at Gmail, or uh, shoot us a tweet because I love those chairs and I need them in my life. Um, so that's the first moment that I thought was sort of funny that they were sitting side by side and not looking at each other or talking to each other. Well, once again, thanks to the Us Weekly article, which everyone should pick up because once again, so much information. That was actually the first time they met. Whitney had signed on to do the show, but she had not met her because they wanted to be natural and on camera, which means it was super awkward because Whitney actually said she watched Laguna Beach and knew who Lauren was, and she was a fan. So I can imagine it was awkward, especially if this was like her first time in front of the cameras. That would be very awkward. I also listened to a podcast recently that she did with Ross Matthews, who I know we both love. Yes. And she had mentioned that her father was in fashion design, so I guess it runs in the blood. But let me just tell you right now, spoiler alert, I love Whitney. Me too. Her dress. Oh my gosh, I love her dress in this scene. I think it's really cute. Speaking of Whitney's dress, there's a scene where the Teen Vogue staff makes over the girls. Yes. And... More than a makeover, more like bashes their clothes, tells them they're not good enough, and makes them put on other things. Yeah, they're like, we need to check out your ensemble so that you can look your best for Lisa. And then they totally make fun of Whitney for her Western look, saying that it's been done before. And the funniest part to me was that they had Whitney take off her horrible belt, like this giant belt, which I definitely had a bunch of those, replacing it with another horrible giant belt. (laughs) Yes, I saw that. I'm like, wait a minute. Wasn't that the same belt she was wearing? But it wasn't. (laughs) It was not, but they're equally terrible. (laughs) And then comes the lovely discussion with Lisa when they go in. And let me tell you, I do like Lisa. I think, you know, it's awesome they have a woman role model. But this whole conversation annoyed me where she was like, when you work for Vogue, no matter what you do, you represent Vogue and I understand that but at the same time I was also thinking you probably shouldn't hire people who are on a reality show if you're real worried about how 
they represent you. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. Um, it was definitely hard for me to focus on the this scene because I had a little moment where I realized that you know you're really old when you're coveting Lisa's Chanel jacket <laughs> instead of anything that the girls were wearing in that scene. I just kept staring at her jacket and was wishing I had it for my very own to wear tomorrow. So that uh, was kind of what I was thinking about during that scene. All right, then let's move on from their first day to the pull side discussion with Heidi. The girls had been addressing envelopes all day for um, this young Hollywood party. And so uh, Lauren was telling Heidi about it and Heidi's like, oh, cool cool, can you get us invites to go? And Lauren's like, no, not really. This is, you know, my first internship, but I don't want to put it in jeopardy. And Heidi's kind of like, what? I mean, that's why, I mean, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I think she was thinking that's why I agreed to be on this show so I can go to lots of cool parties. Yeah. And I, it makes me curious to know kind of how much Elsie knew about, you know, if they were going to show up to the party or not ahead of time. Um, but we can talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I want to talk about the addressing of the envelopes. Okay. And I'm sure you know where this is going since you are related to me and you know me. <laughs> so they're reading the names uh, off, or, off of the guest list, some of the people that they're sending the... I was going to try to scooch past this, but I knew we would come back <laughs> We're to just, Gavin. I know. We, we got to talk grind, about Gavin DeGraw. Let's grind to a halt and talk about how Gavin DeGraw and Josh Demel are our favorites are mentioned as uh, the two celebrities that they're that are addressing envelopes to. And during those days, I may or may not have been going to see several Gavin DeGraw shows every year. Hold on. And by <laughs> several, you mean you've seen over 70. At this point, yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of my secret, my not so secret shame. Um, I did also notice, I can't remember if they said it or if it showed the envelope, but Christina Aguilera was one of the people um, that was invited to the party as well. Disappointingly, we did not see her later. So Jim, let me ask you a question. If you knew about this party in which Gavin DeGraw was going to be there, would you have tried to sneak in? If it was at the expense of my friend losing her job, absolutely not. Even when I was their age, I would not have done that and I think that that is setting the stage for Heidi possibly turning out to be not the best friend but there's no way of knowing because no. I have not seen it in 10 years so I don't know what's going to happen. No that just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> anyway so that does segue into us talking about the young Hollywood party. Lauren is guarding this VIP special section no one is to be let in says Blaine. Well I mean <laughs> that's Pretty epic foreshadowing. Whitney's at the door. So, of course, all of a sudden, Heidi and the crew rolling up, calling Lauren on her cell phone. Why is she answering her cell phone, by the way, while she's at work? But whatever. And saying, we want to get in. And Lauren freaks out. But, of course, you know, she wants, you know, these are her friends. She wants to have fun. So she asks Whitney if she'll let them in. First of all, let's talk about what they should have done. The opposite of everything that you just said. However, if she had said no leave, it wouldn't have been as interesting unless that could have created like a drama where Lauren and Heidi were mad at each other because she wouldn't let her in. So it was more interesting for the show. But at the same time, I'm like, girl, this is the worst first impression ever. Like, no. And besides, I'd be super scared of Lisa Love, by the way. I would be terrified of her if she were my boss. Uh, one thing about the party, which I enjoyed and wanted to share with you because it happened very quickly. Did you notice that the highlights on the red carpet were Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie? No, that is amazing. That definitely caught my eye and there was a guy. So they, sh they showed really quick clips of three people walking across to step and repeat. And it was Paris and then Nicole and then a guy who I'm sure I'm supposed to know who he is. And I had absolutely no recollection of who he was. Okay. And wow. See, I totally misheard you. I thought you said they, their pictures were, were on the red carpet, like in lights. You mean, did I see them walking the red carpet? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and my first thought was, oh, wow, you can totally date the show by seeing who's on the red carpet. Totally, but who was that guy? I have, I to have no idea. I need to know, and I need to know right now, so let's um, do some... He's probably a Kardashian. No, 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 too too soon for that. BK before Kardashian? Yes, it was, a, it was a different world. Anyway, so Lauren's wonderful friends come up, and they're joking around with her, and then she accidentally tells them that it's the VIP section, so they think it would be hilarious to sit down in the VIP section 
situation where, once again, Blaine said, no one is it to sit in until the VIP comes. By the way, did that look like a very good VIP section? No, it looked terrible and boring, and I think that's why no one was sitting there, including Nicole and Paris, who I'm sure were busy socializing, as they did in those days. And I'm sure it was all just a setup, but I know we're not doing that on our podcast, but nobody ever ended up there. And Lisa did mention something about, you know, guarding it until the celebrities, or until they come. It was a very mysterious term when she was talking about they, and it just made me wonder who ended up there, if anyone besides Heidi and the gang. And once again, we have to remember, there's definitely certain things they can't show. Like, if celebs really did come there, they're not going to be on another show like that, you know? Yeah, and the show's about the girls. Right. And what that would be distracting. Is. Little little celebrities in their own sphere. I think this would be a good time to mention that I took account of how many times Lauren says, Heidi! In a very distressed voice. Wonderful. How many times would that be? It was said three times throughout the episode, sometimes in relation to Heidi's uh, lack of dedication and interest in school, and then Heidi's lack of unpacking the apartment, and then in relation to Heidi crashing the party. But Heidi was definitely said three times, and I will be counting it throughout this entire season, and we'll see what kind of tally we end up with. Absolutely. So we have our first drama like true drama of the series when Heidi and her boyfriend Jordan, who's very memorable, begin (laughs) to fight. They make a huge scene. And let me just tell you, I was dying. Number one, so embarrassing for Lauren. Number two, so inappropriate of Heidi, even though I'm sure they've been drinking, but still. It was so cringeworthy, I almost wanted to turn it off. It was awful. It was definitely a painful moment, and you're right. When they showed up originally and were joking about sitting in the VIP, definitely all drunk when they showed up. Heidi and these boys, I don't remember. Who knows? In L.A., it was probably, you know, like 5.30 p.m. and the party ended by 7. But they had definitely been pre-gaming, and I think that made uh, them a little bit bolder and more disruptive than they normally would have been. Um, especially Heidi, because she almost has kind of this shy side to her, at least early on in the show. And I feel like she totally took charge in the situation and was just being super loud and just being very loud and obnoxious. Absolutely. And a little out of character. And then one of the worst moments of the show, Lisa Love walks up to Lauren and says, who is this? And then Lauren says, what are you talking about? What what drama has been happening or something so innocent and wide-eyed? That she, was to Blaine, but... No, that was Blaine, right? Yeah. He, he checked on... Did he check on them first and then Lisa came over? Yeah, he did. I so the... But anyway, when Lisa comes up, it's like, wow... You could see her life flashing before her eyes. She's like, I regret every choice I've made in this episode. (laughs) And And she regrets ever meeting Heidi, ever being roommates with her, all of the above. And Lisa says, we'll talk on Monday and walks away. Which could be the worst words in the English language. Yes, absolutely. And the episode ends. We want to have a couple of regular segments on the show where we talk about different things. And I think the first one is the funniest moment of the show. So what do you think is the funniest moment of the show? I think that the show was very intense because of all the things that were happening. And there weren't really a lot of light moments for me, surprisingly. I took a lot of it very seriously. I thought it was really cute when Elsie got excited about the red wall and then ran up the stairs and pretended to be going down a fire pole from their upstairs balcony. I thought that was a really cute and natural moment and something that she would have done even off camera. And it kind of shows her sense of humor. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was funny, too. Uh, my funniest moment, which you already talked about, was when um, Lauren was flat ironing her dress. That was hilarious. Totally something I would have done, because I will do anything to not actually iron. That is what a dryer is for. Yeah, dryers are for ironing. Absolutely. <laughs> also, can we talk about, I just realized I didn't talk about um, Lauren's outfit at the beginning. Talk about the most retro thing of the episode. Yeah. White tank top and ripped jeans. Absolutely. Come on. Those were the days. Own it, because you did. You want to know what I thought was the most retro moment of the episode? What? When there is a giant Rolodex on Whitney's desk at Teen Vogue. (laughs) It is bigger than my head, and you can tell that they seriously use it. And it got me to thinking, is there anyone out there who still has a giant Rolodex on their desk under the age of 65 who uses it actively and has not 
you know, fed it into a shredder, had some poor intern copy it into their Outlook calendar. That was a really hilarious moment for me outside of the flip phone. And if there is, why? Right. So we need to know, A, is there anyone out there who still has one and uses it? And B, tell us why you're doing this because it doesn't make any sense to me. And it takes up a lot of space on that desk. It is a focal point in every scene in that office where they have the two desks together. (laughs) Another thing we'd like to talk about is why don't you um, tell us what the Bechdel test is? Bechdel test uh, comes from a cartoon that was drawn in the 80s and you can definitely do some research on it. Um, Um, It has a very long and interesting history, but it currently applies to movies. So it's kind of a test to show, unfortunately, it just usually strips what anyone might think of a movie as far as it being a forward thinking and modern film. Basically, it is three questions. And so we're going to ask each episode these three questions and talk about whether or not the episode passes the Bechdel test. The first question is, does the show have at least two women in it. Ding, ding, ding. This passes. Second question. Do the women talk to each other? Check. Third question is, do they talk about something besides a man? Shockingly, yes. So this episode does pass the Bechdel test. We don't know what's going to happen in future episodes. I have some suspicions, but as of today, we're in a good place from a modern and forward-thinking standpoint with season one from episode one 10 years ago. So we're off to a really good start there. Jim, do you have any final impressions of the show? Um, Can we talk about who was the real winner of this episode? That's something I would like to do every week as well. Oh, that's a great idea. Absolutely. So the clear winner of episode one is Heidi because she literally did nothing but hang out (laughs) at the pool. She went to dinner and she crashed a party. She had basically zero stress outside of the fight with her boyfriend, which probably lasted five minutes and was like a drunken fight anyway. So I didn't think it caused her a lot of stress, but she had a great time. She was the clear winner of this episode. And I'm curious to know who you think won it all this time. Well, I don't think it will surprise you to know that I think Lauren won. She moved to LA. She's on her own now in the coolest city. She got a great internship. She's gorgeous. I love Lauren. I think she is like so cool. She's a style icon and a beauty icon. And I don't mean now. I mean, I feel like then she was. She looks amazing and she seems really kind and she seems really nice most people would not have let Heidi into that party they'd be like no go away and even though I think that wasn't the right thing to do I think she just wanted to have her friends have fun so I think that Lauren won the episode for me. She was trying to make everyone happy, too. And I think that most women that age, you know, they either have that instinct or they don't. And she's just one of those people that's really trying to keep the peace and be the good guy. And she's really good at that. And it just comes off as a very natural quality for her. What are you most excited about in um, rewatching the rest of the episodes? I'll tell you, I don't remember anything about this season because it was so long ago and I never rewatched it. So I'm interested to see what happens with this mysterious boyfriend that Heidi has because clearly he's not going to be around forever. So <laughs> I'm very curious to know what happens there. Um, and I don't know if I've mentioned Justin Bobby, but I'm really excited for whenever he shows up. Spoiler alert! <laughs> Justin Bobby. Um, no. But as, as far as the future episodes, I just am interested to see how Heidi and Elsie handle school. I'm sure it'll be very different. And again, like you said, I'm pumped to see some scenes from the actual fashion school because I think that could be really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Audrina and Whitney more fleshed out because they really have very small roles in this episode. So I'm just um, excited to find out more about them. Well, thank you so much for listening, you guys. Um, this has been a great first episode. Uh, we just wanted to let you know to please, please um, find us in iTunes, rate us only if you like us, and subscribe so you can keep getting this podcast on your feed. We are also on Stitcher and Google Play if those are your podcast players of choice. And you can reach us by email at wordsonspokenpodcast at gmail.com. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments. We'd love to hear your feedback. Other ways you can find us on social media are on Twitter at The Hills Podcast. We're on Tumblr. 
Tumblr, Words Unspoken Podcast, and same username on Instagram, Words Unspoken Podcast, and then you can just search our show name in Facebook to like our Facebook page. Please also be sure to tell a friend or a frenemy about us so that they can listen along and we can all go through this together. I'm sure that's going to be a roller coaster of emotion. Jem, what do you mean frenemy? This is a show about friends. I don't know. I'm just making things up. I have no idea what's going to happen. Thank you so much for tuning in to our first episode. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. How do we end this? (laughs) 